Okay? So you have a, lot, a big number of charges, and uh, also in, in, in a lot of situations, you would have that those charges spread out uniformly on that object. Okay? So many, many charges, and they spread out uniformly. So when that is the case, the picture of trying to figure out the electric field of one charge at a time doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? It would be easier to think of some continuous distribution of charge, right? And calculate the electric field due to uh, different sections of the object, but not assume that each section has one charge located at some particular location, but just treat the charge as some, something that you can spread uniformly, right? If you think of water, for example, water is made of atoms, but of course, the behavior of atoms to your, to your eye, naked eye, it just looks like a continuous thing that is flowing, right? You don't see the, that it's made of particles. So the same thing is going to happen with objects that have a charge. You can think of that charge as something continuous, con uniformly distributed on the surface of the object or inside the object, depending on what, what it is. And, uh, and then uh, you, the tools that, or the procedure that I'm going to describe to you, that would apply to those cases. Okay? So the first thing that we want to talk about is when the object is long and very narrow. So they say that you have a line of charge. And there's a lot of charge, as I said. And the charge is distributed uniformly along that rod. For calculating the electric field, it's important to figure out in a section of that object, say in a section this big, so that has a length delta L, the whole object, the whole rod or line of charge has a length L, and it has a charge Q. Right? And the question that you're going to uh, need to answer to calculate the electric field is for that section of the object, how much of that, uh, how much that, sec that section of the object contributes to the electric field at some point P, right? So the first thing that you need to know is how much charge you should assign to that section of the object. How much charge is contained in that section of that rod, right? So this section has a length delta L and it has a charge <coughs> delta Q, right? Question is, how much is delta Q? So if you know the total charge and you know the total length of the object and you know the length of the section that you're interested in calculating the charge, you can figure out how much charge there is there, right? What will be the answer to that question? Delta Q divided by delta L should be equal to the total amount of charge divided by the total length, right? So that means that the amount of charge in that section delta L of that rod should be equal to Q over L times delta L. If delta L, for example, is the whole rod, then the charge containing the whole rod is Q. That's what we call Q. If you have delta L half of L, then you get half of the charge in that section of the rod, and so on. So <clears throat> you see that Q over L shows up here. So we define a quantity called the linear charge density. And the usual letter is lambda. Not to be confused, of course, with wavelength, wavelength, the contexts are completely different. So that's defined, defined as the charge of the object, a linear object, divided by the length of the object, the total charge divided by the total length. So in terms of that, of course, delta Q is just lambda times delta L. So if you know the length of that little section that you're interested in, calculating the charge contained in that section of the object is very simple. It's just lambda times the length of that section. Okay, so the units, of course, of this would be coulombs per meter. Something similar, a similar quantity, uh, we used it when talking about strings. What was that quantity? Right. We call it mu, and we define it as the mass of the string divided by the length of the string. That was the linear 
uh, mass density. This one's the linear charge density. For electrostatics and electromagnetism, the charge uh, of the object, what determines the interaction, uh, we call it Q, right? For gravitational forces, the charge of the object is the mass. Right? That's the connection between uh, electromagnetic forces and uh, gravitational forces. In gravitational forces, you only have one charge, and we call it mass. And for electric and uh, for electric forces, you have two, positive and negative. All right, so that connection is exact. That's what I'm trying to say. The uh, other situation that you will face is when you have a surface. And again, that surface, there is an amount of charge, there's a great number of charges that have been spread on that surface. If this is a metal, it's simply you touch this metal with something that is charged and the charges are gonna flow into the metal and spread, cover everything uniformly more or less uniformly. So you have a lot of charges in, on a surface. And again, to calculate the electric field at some point in space, due to that distribution of, of charges, you're gonna need to talk about the contribution to the electric field coming from different parts of the object, right? So if this thing has a total area A and a total charge Q, right? You might be interested in finding out for this section, which has an area delta A, little area delta A, how much is the charge? Right? So you proceed as before, of course. The amount of charge contained in that, uh, delta, uh, in that area delta A That ratio should be the same as Q over the entire area. And this is dependent on the fact that the area is spread out uniformly. So how much charge you have inside that delta, the, uh, area delta A, that would be Q over A times delta A. And one more time, we want to define, talk about a quantity that is the charge per unit area. And we call that the surface charge density. So the amount of charge inside that small area delta A is the surface charge density times delta A. So the part of the problem that has to do with how much charge is in this particular region, that's how you deal with that, with that part of it. Then the contribution from that charge there to some to the electric field at some point will be depend on that amount of charge and also the distance between that uh, chunk of charge and the point P where you are at.